trust you. And it can change your mind too. I trust you're going to the funeral of that chemist who died down at uh, Sellafield. I am. Um, I, I've had a, always had a strong belief. My friend's a lay reader. Oh yeah. Where? He's sitting over there. I'm having a coffee with him. No, where's he a lay reader at? A spatria. A spatria. Okay. Yeah. So uh, no, I just wanted to. I just wanted to ask you what makes you so that you Well, that, but that's that's good news. You see, you see, Christians throughout history have been certain when they go, when they die. One preacher said, "Our people die well." Are you going to die well? Or are you going to die terrified? Well, what's what's next? I'm going to die you can die culture, well. You can die way, well. When I die, well, Christians I die, die well. It's as simple as that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, but, but um, to be quite honest with you. I'm not being disrespectful to you in any way. Please don't think that. No, I don't. But I think you're very arrogant. Well, I was in arrogant. I'm Bernie just repeating this. Saying that you are going to but that's what this says. I'm just he's repeating what arrogant. this says, my friend. No it's not arrogant. Opinion. It's not arrogant what about, what about other to repeat what, what the Bible says. What about other people's opinion? What they feel about exactly. God? He do not seem to take... Well, what did, what did, well, do you know what Jesus thought of that? Jesus said, if you try to get to heaven any other way other than by him, you're like a thief or a robber before God. That's what he said. I can show you what he says it, my friend. Now, look, you said you had faith. You're sweating like a trooper. There's a contradiction there. I'm not innocent. I'm, I'm, I'm as guilty as sin for a lot of things. But you can be forgiven. But no, listen, I don't need people like you to tell me exactly. yeah. I can be forgiven. Well, the Bible says different. The Bible says different, my that's, friend. That's why all the church How will they hear yeah, unless anyone preaches? Like How will they believe unless anyone preaches? The what, preached message of the gospel for you to listen is to the only way you're, you're going to hear the truth. You're closing the church and the only today. way... You're going to be saved because it's through the foolishness of preaching that God chose to save some. So I come out here. I'm not here to ex exploit you or uh, deceive you. I'm here because I care about your soul. I want to see you in heaven one day. I want to see you in heaven when, after death. And the only way that you can go to heaven is via the cross of Jesus Christ. Repent. God commands it of you. He's not asking nicely, my friends. I didn't tell you to repent. It's the God who made you, who knows your thought life. He says, repent. God commands all people everywhere to repent. Why? Because he's appointed a day which is going to judge this world in righteousness by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the judge, the judge of all humanity. That same Jesus Christ who was born in a manger, angels announced his appearing, wonderful signs and wonders pointing to the birth of Jesus Christ born of a, a, a medical birth, through a medical birth, he lived a sinless life, he healed the sick, he raised the dead, he cured leprosy, he opened blind eyes, and he opened deaf ears, he even forgave sin, and the Jews in the, his day said, who can forgive sin but God alone, only Jesus Christ can forgive your sin my friends, there's no other way, and that same Jesus Christ who died on that cross, to give you and me hope, who bore the wrath of God in our place, he bowed his head. It's finished, paid in full. He was buried three days later, he defeated death, and he was seen by over 500 eyewitnesses. And some of those eyewitnesses saw him ascend up into the clouds from heaven bodily, and he's seated at the right hand of power, and Jesus Christ is coming back. Jesus Christ, your judge and your creator, is going to return at the shout of an archangel, the Bible says. He's going to return in flaming fire, taking vengeance. Jesus Christ is a vengeful God. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord, I will repay. He's going to return in flaming fire, and every eye will see him. Every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He's the King of Kings. He's the creator of everything and he's going to return one day to judge. And so you need his forgiveness today, my friends. You need to be right with God. Are you prepared to meet God? The Bible says prepare to meet your God. Don't die and go to a devil's hell. Don't lose your soul in a place of torment forever. What are you living for, my friends? 
Don't let your sin keep you from an eternal joy. An eternal joy. Can you imagine spending an eternity in a perfect world? This lifetime's really short. It's only like a vapor, the Bible says, that appears for a little while and then vanishes. It's not a perfect world, is it? We know that this world isn't perfect, but there's a perfect world to come. If you put your trust and faith in Jesus Christ alone and live for him the rest of your days, it might only be two days. It might only be two weeks. Nobody knows. But the God of the Bible is going to take your life when his free will determines. He's already appointed, fixed your day of death. And you can't add a single second to your life. Nobody's going to leave this world any sooner than God's appointed time, my friends. No nuclear, no nuclear war is going to take you any earlier than your appointed time. And you'll stand before Jesus Christ. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Cry out to him. Call upon him while he's near today. If you hear God's voice, don't harden your hearts. Your hearts have been hardened enough, my friends. Cry out to Jesus Christ. The only hope for humanity is the only saviour on offer. God bless you, my friend. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him, through Jesus Christ, the world might be saved. Whoever believes is not condemned, but whoever doesn't believe is condemned already. You're condemned already, Carlisle, if you don't believe if you don't trust in what Jesus Christ did on that cross was for you. Hello. <laughs> God made you. You know that? God created you. So please put your trust in the only hope for humanity in Jesus Christ. There's no salvation anywhere other than the cross of Jesus Christ. There's no name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved, you see. Do you believe that? You don't? Have you read the Bible? Have you really? Oh, okay. Well, you know the Bible. Oh, dear. Well, where did you, how did you deal with uh, 1 Timothy 2 that says that no women ministers? No, it wasn't because he, he goes back to the created order, doesn't he? Paul, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't cultural. Because he, he says, uh, a woman, I suffer not a woman to teach you. You serve authority over a man, but you should remain silent. That was culture. No, it wasn't culture because he goes on to read. What, if you read, continue reading, he says, because the woman were, wasn't formed first. The man was formed first. There's order with God. It's men first, the woman, and, you know, oh, Christ first, the man, and women. It's a reality. It's, it's what the Bible says, my dear. You, you, you're in rebellion to your creator. And Jesus said, if you don't abide in my word, you're not my disciple. You know, it's either all of it or none of it. You see, you can't pick and choose. You can't pick and choose the Bible, what you like from the Bible. It's all or nothing. All of scripture, all of the Bible, and only the Bible. God has given us a book. He's given us his word that's a lamp to our feet. We can't pick and choose the bits that we like and the bits that we don't like. It's all or nothing, my friends. We must align our thoughts up with this. That's what men, godly men throughout history have done in this country. And that's why this country has flourished. Because we've, we, we were God-fearing men and women. And that's what you must be, a God-fearing man or a God-fearing woman. What's that? Don't forget your words, Bob. Well, it, it does happen. I'm not a perfect man <laughs> by any stretch. Please repent. Put your trust in Jesus Christ. Repent and believe the gospel. That woman. Hi. Oh, there we go. I've had some Quakers beat me up this morning. Quakers? They ripped my heart out and it's stamped all over. I feel. Who was that? Look at Jim brought me. JWs. He's getting angrier. Oh, I know.
Yeah, He's red in the gills. Yeah, I thought he was going to keep us in a bit. Oh, yeah. Maybe God's uh, at work in him.